Welcome back everybody to Imperion Galactic Survival. I am an old guy gaming and this is the Getting Started tutorial series. And we are uh, going to go into space today and um, show you some of the basic things that you need to know about, well, going into space. Um, I wanted to uh, do, I want to look at one thing here on our, our small vessel. Uh, actually, you know what, before we do that, let's get a couple things cooking up. So... Uh, we've got we're doing good on fuel, but we need some ammunition uh, for our small vessel. Uh, so we have Gatling guns which require uh, 15 millimeter uh, rounds, and then we have rockets which require 130 millimeter rockets or missiles rather. Um, and but we man we need magnesium powder. Okay, well that's gonna that's what we're going to go to the moon for them, because that's a good place. The moon's a good place to get magnesium. But let's at least make sure we have some uh, 15 mil bullets. So um, I'm going to hold down shift and maybe just queue up um, about 5,000 of those. Um, that might be a bit much, but we can use some of them uh, for the base too. Actually, no, we don't have any mini guns in the base. 5,000. Yeah, let's 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 cut that back a little bit. That might be more than we need. Maybe we'll go with about 3,000. Okay. So while those are cooking up, um, I want to look at something here on the small vessel really quick. Let's take a look at the light here. So we'll put our crosshair on the light. We're going to press P, go to devices. And I think I'm going to cut the intensity on these lights. Uh, and actually, let's auto group too. We, we never actually did that. Um... Yeah, we can we can actually do that all from this menu now that I think about it. So we want to just do the purple light. So we're going to bump the intensity down uh, by one uh, one click. And the reason I'm doing this is because, as you can see, you know, there's there's just a little bit a little bit too much blue glow going on here. So we need to tone that down just a little bit. And the way we're going to do that is by uh, you know, cutting the intensity down. So we'll just start from the top, and we're going to go right down the list. We're going to keep an eye and make sure that we're on the purple lights and not the red lights as we do this. Um, that one's all the way down, so that one needs to come up. And then we'll bump this down. It's easier to do stuff like this from the from the menu because then you know then you don't have to go around and try and look for all of them okay so these two are our red lights our marker lights um and we could even if we wanted to name them as such so that way we at least know and tell them apart from the other ones uh and then this one we want to bump down to okay so now let's look that's a little better. It's not quite as crazy as it was before. Um, let's get our own light out of there so we can just see what it looks like. Yeah, see, it's a little better. The the, the lighting effect that you want to do, you know, uh, you, it, you want it to be somewhat subtle. You don't want it to be too overpowering or it just it looks like a bunch of blob lighting, if you know what I mean. All right, so now that we made that change to the vessel, let's go ahead and save the template. Um, let's auto group. We already did that. We, we, and that's one thing I forgot to do is auto group, um, which you kind of want to do, you know, whenever you're saving it. And then we'll do right alt plus O. Find this vessel, which is our tutorial uh, small vessel. And we're going to go ahead and, um, yeah, let's just, we're going to do our final save up in space anyway, so let's just overwrite it for now. Okay, so this is all about going up into space, ladies and gentlemen, all about going up into space. So what are the things that you need to do to prepare for going up into space? There's a few things, and some of them are obvious, but sometimes if you're not paying attention, you might overlook a few things that could get you killed, uh, which is not good. You don't want to get killed. You don't want to die. All right, so let's take a look at those things. What I'm going to do is open up my inventory. 
The first thing that you want to make sure and have is oxygen, because guess what? There's no air in space, in case you guys didn't know that, all right? <laughs> I hope you know that, but in case you didn't, yeah, there's no oxygen in space. So um, you get oxygen a couple of different ways. You can get oxygen by having portable, um, the small O2 bottles, um, and you can even make in your survival constructor uh, these little tiny guys which require, oh wow, we still got, we still got energy bars in there. Um, these just require water, you know, like the little bottled water, uh, and make emergency O2. But at this point in the game, you know, you're probably just going to have these. So always have, you know, some portable oxygen on hand. How much? I mean, I don't know. You you probably should have at least 20, and but you don't want to have too many either because they are heavy and they're going to take up, you know, weight and volume and that sort of thing. So, uh, and then the other way you're going to get O2 in space if you put one on your vessel is from an oxygen um, dispenser okay so we have an oxygen dispenser in here i did a uh, fill up the ship's tank with o2 uh, off camera and so we got a full thing of oxygen that we can also refill in space so make sure guys that you have air when you go into space okay rule number one make sure you have air when you go into space all right now you also want to make sure when you go into space that you have what's called an EVA boost. Um, and so your armor will have these booster slots that you can add different boosters to, which will give you certain effects. And some of them will um, actually give you debuffs as well as buffs. So you want to pay attention. But the EVA boost in particular protects you from extreme cold because guess what else happens in space? It gets really cold um, in space. Okay. Now, in, in Vanilla Imperion, it's just cold in space all the time. Uh, in Project Eden, which is my favorite overhaul of the game, the closer you get to a star or a sun, then it gets actually really super hot. So if you're going to play Project Eden, which I highly rec recommend you do once you you know are used to vanilla, give it a try. Uh, in that case, you're going to want to make sure you have armor that can handle extreme heat, which means you're going to want to have thermal boosts. But in the vanilla game, which is all we're concerned about right now, space is just cold. And so if you're going to get out of your cockpit in space, you need to have an EVA boost, okay? So let's go into our constructor here. And we want to go to uh, the all filter. And you can make an EVA boost. So that's the only booster in the game, in the vanilla game, that you can manufacture yourself. All other boosters you either have to purchase um, or you or you find them in POIs. But Elyon lets us make this one because it's super, super essential. There's a major drawback to an EVA boost, though. Uh, first of all, it requires gold. So um, it requires one gold ingot, which requires five gold ore to make. And so, you know, you do want to make sure that you find some gold. You can find gold um, sometimes on the ground as uh, as rocks. It's pretty rare. Uh, but there are an, there should be enough gold ore uh, on the starter planet if you can find it. The other place that you could find gold is you could actually you know, purchase it, and sometimes you can find it from POI rates. And so somewhere along the line, we came across some gold ore. I don't remember where I found it, but apparently I did. Uh, so gold is kind of the, mo the most important ingredient to make this EVA boost. Okay? Now, this is really important. You need the EVA boost to walk around in space. Um, but... Take a look at what it does to your armor in the screen tip there. Minus 80. Um, you only have 100 armor on light armor. So I'm basically reducing my armor protection by 80% in light armor when I'm wearing this. So you really don't want to wear the EVA boost when you're going into combat. Unless that combat requires you to walk in space. In which case you need to be super ultra careful because of the fact that it's reduced your armor so significantly. Do not put the EVA boost in your armor and then forget about it and then go off and do a, a POI somewhere uh, because you're going to die, okay? Uh, it's, it reduces your armor severely. And so that, that's why I say, you know, when you're looking at the boosters, I don't know, do we have, I don't think, we probably don't have any extra boosters because we haven't really done any POIs or shopping or anything, but just take a look at the screen tip and make sure you know what the trade-off is. You know, it might be giving you more physical armor, but it might be causing you to consume more food, you know, more quickly, for example. 
So pay attention to those things and make sure you know, you know the pros and cons of wearing them and, and use them judiciously. Okay? All right. So let's see. Our EVA boost should be in the output, which is here. So let's just put that in our own inventory, and then we're going to go over to our armor locker. You have to have an armor locker to, to change armor out in boosters. And we're going to pop that in place. And now we are protected to a minus 301 degrees Fahrenheit uh, for, uh, for Colt. Okay? And again, very essential for, for going into space. Make sure you have an EVA boost. Okay, so we need oxygen. We need EVA boost to go into space. Uh, the other thing that you want to make sure you have plenty of when you go into space is you want to make sure you have plenty of fuel because you don't want to get stranded out in space. So just make sure that your vessel, you know, when you're stocking up on, on stuff, um, that you have, uh, you know, fuel in the tank, of course, but then you also have fuel, uh, spare fuel. So let's go, let's disconnect from that. Go to our, uh, our tutorial small vessel. Um, and make sure you have spare fuel and make sure you have spare uh, O2. So I've got some spare portables and I also have some of the big bottles. And the big bottles I'm going to put into into the big tank, okay? But you can also put the small bottles in here too uh, to fill that up. So have spare fuel, have spare oxygen. Now, later on, you're going to start um, needing to, to warp and or you're going to have a shield generator on the ship. Those are expensive. Uh, both of those things are expensive, both in terms of, you know, what it costs to make them, but even more so CPU-wise. Um, hull shield generators are extremely expensive for CPU. You generally are not going to be able to put a fit one of those on anything less than a Tier 3 setup uh, on a small vessel. Okay, just because they're so damned expensive. So when you um, start using warp drives, so you can... You can put in short-range warp drives on a small vessel um, or hull shield generators. Then you're also going to need pentaxid fuel, okay, which is a special kind of fuel for those sorts of things. And then in that case, of course, make sure you have some spare pentaxid too in your, uh, in your, in your cargo uh, for your vessel before you go up into space. And then, of course, there's all the basic things. You make sure you have medical supplies. Make sure you have food you know, all that sort of thing. Make sure you have ammo for your personal weapons if you're planning on, you know, raiding the POI on the moon, that sort of thing. Okay? Um, so, yeah, let's re let's review because these things are super critical. Make sure you have oxygen, both in your own personal inventory and also spare oxygen in your small vessel, large tanks and portables, or, you know, at least a bunch of portables if you, if you don't have the large tanks. So these are super easy to make. Um, I'm pretty sure we've covered that, but in case we haven't, you go to this uh, tools and weapons category and you can make the big O2 bottles from here and they require um, iron or steel plate more specifically and the big water containers, okay? Uh, these big white guys right here. Remember we got those from our little generator that we put down here a long, long time ago uh, and that's what makes the big water for us, okay? I also um, have cooked up some more small O2 bottles in here, and um, but I think I'm going to leave those there because I have 25 in my own inventory and I have another 25 in the small vessel, which is fine for what we're planning on doing today. Again, you don't want to load up on too many of those because they they are heavy and they will you know take up a lot of space. Uh, all right, so let's see. We're waiting on ammunition, so we got uh, 3,100 rounds there for our Gatling guns. We can't make rockets because we're missing magnesium, but that's one of the things that you can find on the moon is magnesium, so that's why we're going to go to the moon. Before we do that, let's take a look and see if... Uh, nope, our pumpkins and oranges are not quite ready. I picked everything else, uh, so we'll have to, you know, check those on the way back. Um, okay, so let's take a burger... In fact, you know what we'll do? I mean, we do have our emergency rations, but what I think I'm going to do is go to my small vessel's refrigerator, and let's just put uh, a little bit of extra food in there for us. And I think... Um, I think I'm, I, I put some medical stuff in my small vessel, and I guess I put some emergency rations too. Let's move those to the fridge. And I'm going to move all the medical stuff to the fridge. I don't need to do that, but I, I, I like to kind of keep food and medical in, in the fridge anyway. 
uh, just because that's a good place to put all that stuff. So I'm, I've also, you know, I have some stuff to cover, you know, medical issues in case I get radiation poisoning, um, antitoxic ointment, antibiotic ointment, and then some of the bigger kits um, that I think we must have looted from somewhere. I can't remember because I, I haven't made any of those. But the one thing that we're not covered on, I think, let's look at that again for a minute. Uh, small vessel bridge. So that's radiation that's toxic, so that would do dermal parasite. By the way, I don't know, I think we've talked about these, but you basically have three grades uh, or three levels of medication. So you have ointments, which will take care of uh, more basic stuff or first stage infections and ailments and stuff that you can get. Then you have the pills, which are kind of the second stage. They they take care of a few more things, and then you have the injections, which are the worst stuff. Um, you know, if you if you get into trouble with those. So what I actually want to do is I want to make a couple of anti-parasite pills. And so we have those, and we're we're covered with anti-toxic ointment, and um, so I think that's really all all we need is some anti-parasite pills and stomach pills. Well, we're not really going to eat anything that's going to make us sick, so I don't think we need to worry about stomach pills. Uh, you can make adrenaline shots. Um, so these will give you, um, this will give you a boost of adrenaline for um, 100 seconds, it says. Yeah. Uh, so that can be useful, you know, if you're, if you're out running around a lot and, you know, you're running out of stamina, but we're not really planning on doing too much of that. And then radiation immunity, uh, you can take this. Now, be careful with this stuff, though. Um, because this can also cause you to consume food much more quickly too when you take these. So, so you know, there's they can't you can't have side effects from these these medicines. Uh, so just yeah, be careful of that. In most cases, I, I like to make sure that I have you know a, a stack of bandages. Um, these will heal 85 health, and you can just you know down a few of them if you need to. Plus, they take care of open wound, broken leg, closed fracture, open fracture, and that sort of thing. And they're much much cheaper to make than you know the big health kits. If you start raiding POIs, you'll actually start looting these. And I, I rarely have to make these myself. I usually get enough just by looting uh, to, you know, to, to, to tide me over. Okay. Uh, I don't know why we're carrying this around. Let's just trash it. We can make another one for free later if we want to. And uh, let's see. We've got some shotgun shells, some projectile rifle rounds, some sniper rounds. So we're recovered. I'm not planning on doing any personal combat up in space, but it's always good to make sure that you're prepared. Okay, guys, I think that's pretty much it. Um, you know, make sure you have drill charges and multi-tool charges. You should always have that stuff on hand, no matter what, um, whether you're going to space or going anywhere else, for that matter. And, you know, we could move these down onto our toolbar, too, I guess, for, for quick access. Um, and maybe we'll move our rations down here, too. Uh, but we're doing good on food. Okay. So, I think we're ready to go. I think we're ready to go. Let's hop on out here into our ship. And let's go up into space for the very first time. So, I'm going to press the P key. Um, if you if you turn on the oxygen, then you'll, you'll pressurize your cabin. And then you can take your helmet off, which is the U key. And you'll still be able to breathe inside your cockpit. Okay? All right, let's go up into space. So we're just going to point our nose straight up and head right up. Now, if you look on the left-hand side, you'll see my um, altimeter is climbing. That's telling you how quick you are to get out of the atmosphere. So it shouldn't be, take us too much longer. And right about now, we're going to pop out. And welcome, everybody, to space. Space in Empyreon um, now is absolutely gorgeous. Um, they, we used to kind of have like a static background, but now we have, um, you know, now we have an actual 3D galaxy, and it's just, it's so beautiful uh, up here. And we got, you know, nebula off in the distance. All of the stars that you see in the sky, you can go to. Okay, so... There's thousands of star systems that you can visit in this game now. It's sort of like, you know, the same kind of idea as No Man's Sky or Elite Dangerous. 
you know, even though those particular games have like, you know, millions, billions and billions of star systems, it's ridiculous. But practically speaking, even with just thousands of star systems that you can go to, you're never going to visit them all in a single game. That's just not going to happen. So for all intents and purposes, we have an infinite number of stars so that we could visit if we wanted to. Um, so yeah, welcome to space. Okay, so once you get into space for the first time, make sure you run your detector. I should have actually done that already. And, and be careful of your surroundings because there's going to be enemy ships flying around, particularly the ones uh, with the red text. Uh, those are going to potentially be like, you know, Xerax vessels. Or, you know, depending upon the area of space that you're in, they could be, um, they could be um, the Creel or, you know, Pirates or the the Legacy. Um, so you want, just like anywhere else, you want to be aware of your surroundings. Now, what the game will often do, too, is it'll place in orbit a destroyer, a Xerox destroyer, and it is mean as hell. And if it gets a hold of you, it's going to tear you a new one. So um, there, there's two, you know, two threats to be aware of immediately in space. There's space drones, okay, and you know they're dangerous, and you know they they can be plasma drones or laser drones, and they'll attack you. So you got to be careful of those. But you really have to watch out for that uh, that destroyer because that destroyer will wreck your day. Um, it, it's a capital vessel. It's got lots of guns on it, and um, it may, it's it's made space very very dangerous. Um, so always be, you know, situationally aware, keep that detector running and press the M key to go into your map and just kind of, you know, watch around. Now, the ships with the orange, those um, are pro are probably not going to hurt us if we don't hurt them. Uh, and they're they usually end up being like Polaris ships or they could be like pirate ships. Uh, the pirates, by the way, are a faction like any other faction, and if you piss them off, they will they will be hostile towards you. But if you don't, you know, you can befriend them and you can actually trade with them. Um, then you know, then you don't have to worry about them. So it just depends upon who you've made enemies. Okay. Um, so one of the first things I want to show you about being in space is to get used to drifting. Okay. Um, because we are in space, there's no gravity, and therefore there's no drag on our ship. So if you want to go to a certain place, like, say, the moon, for example, I'm going to press page down to bring my, my crosshair a little bit closer. Um, what you want to do is, is get your heading, and then just get up to full speed. So just watch the, the gauge on the right, and when it's at full speed, um, simply hit the I key, and that turns off your inertial rockets. And now you can just drift, and you're not burning any fuel while you're doing this, okay? And you will continue heading in the direction that you were thrusting towards, no matter, you know, which direction your ship itself is actually oriented. See? So now I'm kind of almost like falling down to the moon, if you will, because I changed my orientation, but this is this is the direction that I, that I was thrusting in, so I will continue going in that direction forever until I make a course correction, okay? So that's the first thing to know. Well, one of the first things to know about being in space or maneuvering in space is get in the habit of drifting to where you want to go. You'll save a hell of a lot of fuel. It's going to be even more important with capital vessels because capital vessels can, you know, can burn through the fuel very quickly. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we want to save fuel no matter, what, you know, what we're doing or where we're going. So... Yeah, that's just the I key. Now, if I hit the I key again, um, it turns my inertials back on, and now the ship will automatically slow down, and the thrusters will will kick in and, and to hold me perfectly still, okay? If you look in the lower right-hand corner, um, there's the second icon in shows my ship, and then it shows a couple of arrows, one pointing up and one pointing down. Those are my inertials, so the I key will just simply cycle through turning the inertial dampeners, if you want to call them that, off, okay? So yeah, drifting in space. Let's go ahead and do another squirt. I should be paying a little bit more attention to my surroundings because we could be running into an enemy. Um, but at present, it doesn't look like anything's pursuing us. Um, but what will happen if, you're, if the destroyer is in the system, both it and space drones will come after you. I mean, somehow or another, they, they know you're there, and they'll, they'll actually chase you down. And so, again, just be really, really careful and watch, you know, watch what you're doing. Okay, so what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to drift into the moon. Now, um, 
I'm going to put my inertials back on so I, I, I have better control here. Be careful when you first land on the moon. I recommend that you land very near the poles, either the north or the south pole, because if you land like over the equator, you could potentially be landing right smack dab in the middle of, a Zer of Xerax territory, you know, with a big mean POI that's going to shoot you down. Um, you're not usually going to find those right at the edge of the pole, though you can, uh, but it's just a little safer to kind of enter over the pole. So you just fly towards the moon, and then pretty soon it'll kind of transition back to the to the moon play field. And now we are within the moon's atmosphere, okay? And then so what we're going to do is we're going to press O to level out. We're going to do a, a squirt of our detector, and we're just going to kind of see what's going on around us. We don't want to land in Xerox territory because, again, if we do that, we could get shot down, uh, you know, before we even get started. All right, cool. So we are on the moon now, and um, this is a great place to come for for resources that you um, either can't get on the planet or to just get get them eat more easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to you know do my detector again, and just like we saw on the planet, uh, we have all kinds of resources on the moon. But right now we don't know exactly what those resources are. We just know that they are resources, okay? So if you press the M key and bring up your uh, your info, it'll actually tell you what deposits exist on this moon. Um, so we have three deposits of titanium, we have four deposits of iron, three of silicon, two of cobalt, three of magnesium, which is actually what we're looking for specifically right now because of the fact that we need that to make our rockets. And then there's five deposits of pentaxin. Remember, that's the fuel that I, I talked about where you, that you need for your warp drive and for your shield generator, okay? Um, now, one of the things that I'll often do is I will come up to the moon and I will deplete a particular resource, like pentaxin, for example. In doing so, once I completely deplete that resource, it, the game will start sending then meteorites down to the moon of that resource and then I can just mine it straight up and it's a lot easier uh, to do because it's just a big old chunk of whatever the mineral is right on the surface and you just go up to it and you mine it and you get a shitload of resources without having to you know burrow underground like like we looked at a couple episodes ago with our hover vessel all right uh, so pentaxid uh, promethium if there are promethium deposits on the moon um, and you know to a lesser degree magnesium um, are good things to mine out so that you, that you can then start getting those asteroids now to be really effective though at asteroid or I should say meteorite mining you really need a mining vessel and a capital vessel to get the mining vessel up to the moon you can mine meteorites by hand but it takes a long time and it's just much more efficient to use uh, a mining vessel. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, get within, I think we have to get within a kilometer. No, actually, I think it's two kilometers. Uh, or you can just put your cursor right on it and at some point it'll recognize it. So let's just get here. There we go. Okay, so that's an iron deposit. We don't need iron. What we're after is magnesium. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly around and we're going to see if we can locate a magnesium deposit so that we can mine some of it. Uh, some of it. Now the moon will have drones, uh, so sometimes the drones will. Be, there's a pentaxid deposit. Sometimes the drones will will kind of be wandering around, but most of the time they'll stay near uh, either their territory um, or they might be patrolling one of these uh, deposits. In which case you'll have to take them out. Let's, by the way, select our Gatlings and make sure that they are loaded. Um, why did I not put my ammunition in here? I didn't. We came up here, guys, with, and I forgot to put the ammunition in the small vessel. Don't do that. That's a, that was a bad mistake. <laughs> that was a dumb. That was a dumb mistake. If we if we ran into a drone right now, we'd have no way to defend ourselves. Um. Fortunately, though, for us, there are no drones guarding this magnesium deposit, which we need. Um, so, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, that was not smart on my part. Um, so, again, 
one of those situations where I uh, learned from my mistake, right? Learned from my mistake. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just stay aware, um, you know, of any potentially incoming drones because they could, you know, decide to come after us. Uh, but we're going to go down to this mag deposit and we're going to just kind of get right over it here. And just like we did on the planet, we're just going to mine this with our drone. Um, but again, we just, uh, I can't emphasize enough that you want to just, you know, pay close attention and frequently run your detector and make sure nothing's going to come in and, um, you know, come after you. Okay. So let's go ahead and, oh, we got to put our helmet on. That's the U key, by the way. We're just going to stand right on top of our vessel, launch our drone, press the 5 key to get our drill out, and let's also make sure that we're connected to the small vessel so everything that we mine goes directly into the small vessel's cargo. Um, I'm going to press the, the M key and then come back out and so that I get my mini map up in the upper right hand corner so you can press M or tab, either one's fine. And um, Notice that when I um, have my, okay, yeah, it's not going to matter for this. There, there, the one thing that's important to have is this ore scanner. So some types of ores will, will be in, in like little nuggets, and we saw that when we mined the Prometheum a few episodes ago. Others are just kind of like a solid uh, deposit, in which case you just drill down into it and then you drill out the entire deposit, okay? We've already gone over that stuff, but I'm just, you know, kind of doing a quick review here. All right, let's go ahead and drill down to this magnesium deposit. It is a very small deposit, so um, it'll only take us a couple of seconds, in fact, to mine this whole thing out, but this will be enough to get us started uh, to make our rockets that we need to make. So I'm keeping my eye on, on the mini-map for any red dots that might be coming in. I'm going to periodically press the M key also to look for uh, red dots that might be a little further out, further out than my mini-map can detect. If you see a red dot on your mini-map, you have very, very little time to get back in your cockpit and get away. I mean, we're talking maybe a second or less because it's almost too late if you see them on the mini-map and they'll start firing on you. Okay, so we are done uh, drilling out this little deposit. What I'm gonna do is right click and go to my filler tool and just patch up this hole so I don't fall into it later if I happen to be running along the surface of the moon on my hover vessel. Uh, later on when I come up here to mine meteorites. And let's see, that got us uh, 69 magnesium ore, which will be plenty for, um, for making the rockets that we need to do back at home. Okay. Cool. So, what I think we might do at this point is I might actually go back home and make those rockets and actually bring some frickin' ammunition with us next time before we come back up into space. But, um, yeah, okay, so we're getting into Xerax territory. I was going to go take out a couple of drones, but... We can't do that because I forgot the ammunition, so there's a silicon deposit. But what I'll typically do is, you know, I'll just scout the whole moon. I'll, I'll essentially, you know, this is a small moon, and so, you know, it's much smaller than our planet, and it doesn't take long at all to uncover the whole thing. And so that way I can, you know, find all the ores that I need to find, all the resources, that sort of thing. And then, you know, mine them as needed. And then if I, if I come across some drones, I'll just kind of pop them. Now, you're also going to find on the moon, you're going to find uh, POIs. So this particular POI is, is the a wrecked ship. And this put, happens to be the wrecked Titan. And it is used in the storyline. If you follow the storyline, you will eventually come here. And you'll have to do some stuff there, but uh, I'm not going to give any of that away because in this tutorial series we are avoiding anything that has to do with the story. I want you guys to discover that on your own. But you can also find other um, other types of POIs, uh, wrecks, and that sort of thing that you can salvage on the moon. And so you know it's it's definitely worthwhile to to come along and, and explore and uncover everything that you can find on the moon itself. 
So we got lots of resources up here. There's a titanium deposit. But just pay attention to the red, you know, because that's the important thing. Do we have night vision goggles? We don't. Okay. One of the things that night vision goggles uh, it can be useful for is when you get into the dark side of the moon, it gets really, really dark for a little bit, but then the, you know, then it lightens up again. But night vision goggles can help you see a lot better when you're on the dark side of a moon or a planet or whatever. So that's a pentaxid. Another pentaxid. Um, yeah, so that's that's actually a Xerax POI. Um, and we're not going to get near it because it does have some sentry guns on it. But again, part of the uh, part of the tutorial, uh, or, or the storyline rather. So I'll let you discover all of that on your own. Okay, now we got some drones up here. So again, because we have no way to shoot them, um, we're going to avoid them for now. But this is an example of one of the wrecks that I was talking about that you can salvage. So that wreck over there is being guarded by a couple of drones. So what you could do is take out those drones and then you could go salvage that wreck and get some good parts off of it. In this particular case though, that wreck is very close to what actually I think happens to be the drone base, which is a very dangerous POI. That thing's got big guns on it, and if you get too close to it, it's going to try and blow you out of the sky. So stay away from the big POIs when you're in a small vessel that doesn't have shields or appropriate weaponry to take it on. Um, but you know you're not always going to find the um, you know these these random salvageable POIs right next to an enemy POI. A lot of times they won't be, but it's very common to have a couple of drones guarding it. In which case you have to take those drones out. So this is, uh, yeah, that's storyline stuff. Okay, I don't want to get into that. So just trust me, when you start your, your game, follow the storyline and you'll eventually f discover all that stuff and figure out what it's all about and that sort of thing. Okay, so let's just kind of uncover a few more things here. an iron deposit. Okay. Let's see what this stuff is. Iron deposit. And you can you can kind of keep track of what you've discovered. So, you know, this says one of three, which means I've discovered one of the three titanium deposits on the on the planet. Uh, specifically, what I'm actually looking for is the other magnesiums, because if we mine all of those out, then we could actually get a meteorite. Uh, we don't really need more magnesium right now, though. Okay, so there's an example of a resource that's being guarded by a drone. So normally I'd shoot that sucker down if I had ammunition, uh, but I don't. So uh, we'll, have to, we'll just have to let that one go for now until we can discover it later once we can get rid of the, the dude. All right, well, guys, I think what, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to, um, I'm going to go back home. So let's go ahead and head back up into space and make some rocket ammunition now that we have the magnesium that we needed. And also, you know, grab the, the 15 mil ammo that, <laughs> that I made but forgot to put the ship. And then let's we'll come back up into space at that point and we'll see if we can um, find a, a space drone or two that we can, you know, do a dogfight with. And if we can't, you know, we might end up coming back to the moon and then at least, you know, taking out a couple of the drones on the moon. Okay, I'm going to press the I key and just drift back to our planet. And I will meet you guys back up in space here in just a few moments. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, I haven't actually gone down to the planet yet, but I wanted to show you something. Uh, if you have your base uh, set as a waypoint, um, then, uh, so in other words, it shows up in this list. I don't, you don't see anything here because this is the waypoint for, the, for orbit. 
um, it'll actually show up from space. And so that that's very useful because then you kind of you know know where to land on the planet. Uh, the game used to not have that feature, and so you'd kind of have to get used to the to the land the the look of the planet from space, the continents and that sort of thing. So you kind of knew where to land, and it was very could be very difficult to do that. But now, you know, as long as it's set as a waypoint, then you can easily find it from space, and you know you know where to go. All right, so let's go ahead and enter the atmosphere here. And we'll just head straight on down to our base. Press the O key to, to level out here. And then I press the, the left alt key to get into camera free camera mode and then use my arrow keys. Um, to kind of straighten out and then come in for a nice straight landing on our landing pad. Maybe just adjust it this way a little more. There we go. Okay, so uh, when you land your vessel, um, you may not want to cut the power on it because you might have something in the refrigerator, for example, which we do in this case, or you might have like um, you know, a constructor making something or something like that. So press the P key. And, you know, this is, again, where it can be handy to set up custom switches. So what you could do is you could set up a custom switch to just turn off those items that you don't, uh, you know, that you don't need to keep running while you're in dock without just cutting the entire power. Because we do want to keep our refrigerator going. But right now we're using uh, 253 power units. Now, pay attention to your thrusters because, excuse me, if you, if you fully land usually what will happen is your thrusters will will turn off um but if you're not fully landed put and this is probably even more applicable to like a capital vessel um it's just not a bad idea to get in the habit of turning your thrusters off now in our case we are fully landed so none of the thrusters are engaged so it didn't make any difference in our power consumption um but pay attention to that because in a lot of cases like i said especially on capital vessels uh it might uh, they might not be all turned off, in which case you should turn this off to save power. Um, turrets and weapons may or may not make a difference. In this case, it did. Uh, so we saved a little bit of power there by pulling those in. Um, lights will reduce power. Uh, shield will reduce power. In our case, we don't have a shield generator, so it doesn't matter. But, um, you know, those are probably some of the main things that, you, that you're going to want to turn off when you're docked. Uh, but we want to keep our refrigerator going, like I said, so our food doesn't spoil. Okay, now that we're in, in, in dock here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my ammunition area, and I'm going to click Manage, right? And then we're going to go to our base, to our output, and we're going to load up the 15 mil bullets that I forgot to take with us. And, you know, pay attention because it's going to take up weight and volume, but we have plenty of, of that for this ship. While we're in this menu, uh, which we could also get to by just pressing F4, as you already know, uh, we're going to go over to the base on this side. We're going to go to the input, and we're going to put the magnesium, and I guess we can throw the stone in there too, into the input. Okay? Um, now what we're going to do is we go to this side, select the base, right? And then go to uh, input, select uh, the constructor. And we want to tell it to make some 130 millimeter rockets for us. So we want to make sure we're on small vessel. And then we go to, uh, to weapons and items. And then this has an output count of six. Uh, so that'll give us uh, 60, 120, 180, and 240. So let's queue up about 240 of those rockets for the base to make for us um, that we can then load up into our ship. Okay. So we just really have to wait until, you know, until uh, it's done doing that. So let's go check our garden whilst we're waiting. Oh, did we run out of power in the base? We did. Oh, that's my bad too. Yeah, we should have checked the power before we left. Um, so we want to go to base overflow and let's get, a, get that going again. Yeah, that's not good at all. Uh, if you're on 
if we were on like a really cold or a really hot planet, we could have actually lost our crops. But fortunately, our crops are okay because this is a temperate planet and it didn't make a huge difference. And plus, we weren't gone for that long anyways. Oh, too many things for the old brain to remember, you guys. Too many things for the old brain to remember. Let's go ahead and pick our oranges and our pumpkins since they're ready. And then we can get... Well, I guess the pumpkins aren't, just the oranges are. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to wait for those to get ready before we can make our next uh, batch of rations. So, let's see here. What are we doing? Uh, we're waiting for our rockets to, to finish up. And then we're going to go back up into space and see if we can mix it up with some space drones. So, yeah, guys, I'll just meet you back up into space. I'm, what I might even do, too, is fly around a little bit and see if I can find some space drones before I bring you back. And then uh, we'll take them out and do a couple more spacey space things. So, see you in a bit. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, all of my rockets are uh, finished making up. One of the things we're going to do, though, too, is we're going to make ourselves um, some larger fuel tanks. Uh, so we're going to learn the T2 fuel tanks here in the tech tree. And then we're going to go into base and equipment. And we're going to queue up uh, a couple of those. And I'm just going to place them up along the wall there. And we're just going to take this guy and squirt him right on up here. And when that one's done, we'll put the next one by him. And then I'll fill those up. And then we'll have a lot more fuel. So our base will stay running for longer whilst we're gone. Let's press F4 here. We're going to go to our small vessel, and we're going to transfer the rockets over. And we have our 15 mil bullets loaded up now, so fine. now we have fuel in our vessel, like we should have done in the first place. But can't remember everything all the time. <laughs> That's my excuse, especially at my age. So, guys, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that um, finish. I'll put it up there, paint him, put some fuel in, and then I'll meet you guys uh, back up in orbit and we'll go hunting for some space drones okay guys we are back up in orbit and um <clears throat> we have a bunch of stuff off this direction including um a couple of um at least one asteroid and i'd like to see what that asteroid is and then we have some other ships flying around and there's some enemies ships right over here next to the polaris station um that might be might be the cat the enemy capital vessel let's just uh, start working our way over there and see uh, what the deal is I'm gonna load my weapons too so those are ready to go if we run into some space drones we'll probably just use the Gatlings uh, for them it's really really hard to hit space drones with with uh, passive or static rockets or whatever they're not homing in other words but once you get homing rockets then you know, then you can really take them out. Um, all right. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. We're taking fire. Evasive. Evasive action. So, we must have just had a space drone or something spawn in. So, let's um, see if we can figure out what the hell that was. Okay. We got a couple of red blips off this way. Oh, did we just get too close to that defense station? Maybe that's... Maybe that's what it was. I'm not sure, though. These are Polaris vessels here, so they, they won't fire on us unless... Well, unless we fire on them first. Um, yeah, I might have just gotten a little too close to that defense station, I guess. Uh, but the thing about the drones is, you know, they tend to kind of just all of a sudden spawn in. So one moment everything can be clear, and then the next all of a sudden there's some drones. So you really got to be careful uh, about those guys. And one thing you can do is you can kind of just sit still and watch the map for a moment. And if you see a red dot moving very quickly, that's a space drone. Okay, so this vessel's moving pretty fast and it looks like it is coming uh, towards us. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I think I just got a little too close to that enemy station. That's probably what happened. 
This is also a very fast moving vessel, but that's a Polaris because it's orange. Okay. But like I said, we could we could get you know space drones just spawning in all of a sudden, like right in our position. It'll the game will do that to you, so you really have to be careful. Um let's go ahead and see what this red station is, and then that might be that might be an asteroid out there, but man, it's 12 clicks out. It's quite a ways out. So we'll just see if we can figure out what this guy is. We'll get within two kilometers. Um, and either is, if we have our crosshair on it or... There we go. Okay, that's a Xerox resupply station. So that's going to be an enemy base. We want to kind of stay away from that for now. Um, so let's go move, maneuver back up this direction. Okay, this is um, suspicious here because it's moving quickly. So that could be a space drone or it could be the enemy capital vessel, which can be like a destroyer or a corvette. Uh, but whatever it is, it's not going to be friendly and it can put the hurt on us pretty good too. Yeah, I think Yeah. Okay, so that's an enemy Corvette. Now, when uh when he spots you and that's what the eyeball means and the exclamation means he's dangerous, of course. Um you don't want to get anywhere closer than a than a kilometer from from these cap enemy capital vessels um, because you you get right within about a kilometer or so of them and they will fire on you and they have some pretty impressive weaponry. They have enough to tear us apart like in seconds. So he's extremely dangerous and what he's going to do now is he's going to actually chase us. He's going to pursue us now that he knows that we're here. Um, and you know we have no we'll have no trouble outrunning him as long as we like I said don't get within about a kilometer of his position. So let's kind of skirt around him and do a little bit more exploration. We could uh, and probably will see some space drones uh, spawn in and attack us uh, fairly soon. This pink thing is a uh, legacy faction. So th these are like the enemy um, alien factions. Uh, of the game that you'll you learn all about as you you know follow the storyline, and that planetary remnant POI is uh, also I believe part of the storyline too. Okay, so let's see what else do we got over here. This is probably a Polaris vessel. Yeah, so he's not going to bother us as long as we don't bother him. Uh, and this is a Polaris POI, which the if you follow the storyline, uh, it'll take you there too. So we're not going to do anything with that either. Okay, let's do another thing I'm a doodle here, a little squirt. Um I'd like to see if we could go uh, show show you the Polaris station, uh, the orbital trading station. Oh, it's right behind us. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a 180. Was that this direction, I think? Yeah, it's over this way. Okay. So the orbital trading station is something that you can get to uh, from the, the planet side trading station through a teleporter. Um, so you can get to it, but the thing is, is you have to be able to at least enter the the orbit of the planet first with the ship before you quote unquote know that it's there and then once you know that it's there you know then you can actually teleport it to it in your body and you don't necessarily have to fly up here the main advantage to flying up to it though in a ship is that then you can haul back uh, stuff that would be t you know too heavy for you to carry um, in your body um, and I actually kind of ran into that situation in my let's play series I was trying to get some 
crop plots, and the, and the vendor on the trading station had some crop plots, but um, the, I could only carry one at a time. So um, in that case, it, w it would have behooved me just to take my ship up. Okay, before we go in here, um, I want to make sure nothing's coming after us. Okay, looks like we might have a space drone. Yep, we have a, a, spa a laser space drone. Okay, let's engage this guy. Um, but we do need to be careful because he's he's close to the... Uh, to the Corvette, so we have to... Now, there could be another one, so let's be on our guard here. As long as that Corvette's far enough away and there's not another space drone coming in on us, let's look at the map and see if there's any red dots moving very quickly towards us. Okay, that's the... yeah, we don't have to worry about him. All right, so we should have enough time uh, to hop out really quick and loot this. It, if you can, and sometimes you can't because it's too hot, but if you can't... whoops! Uh, try and loot these space drones because they can have some good stuff on them, uh, particularly things like power coils and flux coils, uh, which are expensive components that you need. Before I hop out, I'm just going to do one more squirt, and again, make sure there's no real fast-moving red dots because, again, th those drones can spawn in and just be right there. Okay, let's spacewalk. All right, so we only we only got some fuel and cobalt off of that. Nothing too crazy, but still useful stuff uh, for sure. Uh, plus, you get good XP for killing space drones, too. All right, let's do another scan here. The Corvette is moving towards us. He is pursuing us, and he's only, you know, 5.7 kilometers out. And, you know, the thing about docking at the space station is that the space station is not going to do a damn thing to protect you. Um, so, you know, you could potentially get pinned down here. So what might be a better tactic for me uh, to do uh, is draw the Corvette, you know, way out and then kind of circle around and then come back. Um, because if I, you know, if I dock here and then it gets within range, it, it'll probably start firing. I mean, again, the, tr the training station is not going to do anything to, to keep me safe if that happens. So... Yeah, look at this big old super freighter. That's pretty cool looking. Now, you know, if you want to be enemies with the Polaris, uh, you can actually take these things on and, you know, take them down and loot them and stuff. But, of course, just be aware that, you know, the Polaris are the main trading faction in the game. And if you decide to, uh, to become enemies with them, then you're really kind of screwing yourself when it comes to, to trading. Uh, you can trade with some of the other factions too, but not like the Polaris. You know, they're going to have all the. They're kind of like the the Amazon of, um, you know, of, of Imperia, if you will. Okay, that's just the defense station. He is very close, though, um, you know, to this trading station. So we want to be careful that we don't get too close to him. So the the Corvette is closing in on us. Um. So I think what we really should do, just to play this safe, is we need to draw that Corvette off and get him far enough out and then kind of circle around him to come back. Um, oh, we got another space drone. Okay, so yeah, they'll spawn in, um, you know, just randomly, so you really got to keep an eye out for him. He's, uh, he's really close to that, you know, to the Corvette too, so we want to make sure as we fight this guy that we don't get within range of the core of it. You know, one thing I noticed too is um, let's look at something here. Okay. Uh, is that that down thruster that's right in front of us, the you know, the, the burn from the thruster kind of gets in our view, so that's a design we might want to change at some point. Do we have another? Yeah, we got two space drones now. Yeah, I just, I don't like taking them on when they're that close to the Corvette. Let's get a couple squirts off on him. Okay, 
whoa, 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 whoa. Take, take fire. Let's go into third person so we can kind of see what's going on here. Do another scan. Oh yeah, that Corvette's really close to us, and looks like we got this laser drone. Okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of an, an evasive, uh, evasive maneuvering here. Um, let's kind of get out. We're gonna cut our inertials, and then we're gonna flip around to do a 180. If we can hit him, then, you know, we can, um... Oh, shit, I thought I had those loaded. Well, that wasn't smart. Um, what I was saying is, if you can hit him, you can get him stun-locked, and then, you know, stop them from shooting at you. There we go. So, yeah, you can you can fight in third person or first person. I, I'll usually do a little bit of both. Um, because the nice thing about third person is you can kind of see around a little bit better. Uh, but there's no way we can safely loot this guy because we're way too close to that Corvette. And again, he's closing in on us. Uh, and remember what I said, you don't want to get within a kilometer, uh, of that guy or he'll wreck your day. <clears throat> a little tip for you too, when you kill the space drones, they'll still show up on the scanner, which is a good thing because then you know where to go to loot him. Um, but... You can tell the difference between a live one and a dead one because the the live ones will have like the little eyeball and the exclamation icons, whereas the dead ones won't. So you know if you're taking on like two or three of them, it, sometimes it can be confusing as to which one's the live one and which one isn't. Okay, let's get away from this Corvette. We're gonna we're gonna kind of burn up off this way and uh, just get away from him and we're gonna we're gonna kind of draw him out towards the edge of the of the orbit here and then kind of circle around him to come back uh, and then dock at the Polaris station so I can show it to you so I'll probably just do that off camera here we're gonna just drift out for a bit and I, I just want to pull him far enough out to where that I can go back land on the station and have enough time to just kind of show it to you really quick and then we need to wrap up this episode all right, guys, I pulled him about uh, 10 kilometers or so out from the trading station. That should give us enough time. Um, we do have an, an asteroid of some sort here, and I can tell that because of, I can see the little asteroid icon on the map. Uh, so let's go see what this is as we work our way towards uh, the trading station. And so, yeah, you will find asteroids in orbit, um, usually promethium, cobalt, and you know sometimes just iron and copper and silicon. And those are very useful uh, to mine. Okay, so that's a copper asteroid. That's good. Um, so let's just kind of still stay on our guard because we still could get um, space drones all of a sudden spawn in. And we don't want to get too close to that Xerax defense station either. So this thing that's some odd kilometers out. Um, let's, let's just see what that is too before we dock at the station. This is probably just another space base of some sort. Oh yeah, okay, that's another defense station. All right, so we don't have a ton of time before that Corvette comes back. Um, it looks like it probably is coming back this way. But let's take a quick uh, look at the orbital trading station. And so you'll notice that it said we were in, in range uh, of the station and it's offering us station services. And so I, I think I've showed that to you before, but if not, I've got to do this really quick because that Corvette's coming in. But basically if you press P and you have the station services, uh, you can get you can repair your ship. Looks like we have some very minor damage, so we'll go ahead and just repair that. Uh, you can also fill up your ammunition. Um, you can fill up your shield. You can fill up your fuel, your oxygen, all that sort of thing. Um, but, like I said, we don't have a lot of time. Oh, shit, it is coming fast. Okay, well, anyway, 
Um, you can dock at the space station here. So you just basically pull them right on into the hangar here and set her down. And then um, I'm going to leave my thrusters on so I can make a quick getaway. Uh, oh, yeah. Now, I think I've talked about this, but in case I haven't, um, you don't ever want to loot something from another faction um, if it, you know, gives you that red warning, because that's going to affect your, uh, you know, your reputation. Uh, but let's just go in and take a quick look here uh, in the space station. And so we're just going to go up this elevator to here. And uh, we can turn our jetpack off. And then, yeah, so you got like this little, you know, almost like a mall up in space here, which is really cool. And lots of different vendors. You can buy food from them and stuff. Um, there's three really important vendors that you need to know about. Uh, the first one is in the conference room here. And it's this, he's at, at this is actually what the Xerax look like. Um, but he, this particular Xerax is friendly. He's got some sharp teeth though, doesn't he? And he's, uh, he's basically like the weapons guy. Uh, so you can buy and sell a lot of the Tech 2 and even some of the Tech 1 uh, weapons uh, to him. So what will happen, and you can get some of the boost from him too, uh, or a set of heavy armor, but that stuff's very expensive. Um, so what will happen is you start to loot POIs is you'll accumulate a bunch of extra weapons and stuff. And then so what you'll want to do is hang on to them and come up here and you can sell them uh, to this guy. Or if you're looking for that elusive sniper upgrade kit or heavy weapon upgrade kit and you haven't found one from looting, you can come up here and purchase one uh, from them. The way that it works is that um, the stock on the right is is his total stock, and the stock on the left is how much he currently has. So if I had six miniguns in my inventory, I could sell all six of those to him right now um, for a total of ten. So do pay attention, you know, to those quantities. The other thing you got to be really careful of when you're selling to these guys is the game will also pull off of your toolbar. So if I have a total of three T2 shotguns to sell, as an example, okay, um, I have two in my inventory and one on my toolbar, but I don't want to sell the one on my toolbar. I want to make sure that I only sell two to him because if I sell three to him, it's also going to pull off my toolbar. So you have to be careful of those sorts of things. All right, so that's your weapons vendor. Now, if you go up to the second level here uh here's this is the mining vendor and he's going to sell drills drill charges he's got medium armor some different boosts and then he's also got you know some of the basic ores and stuff so you could get a gold ingot from him if you needed one to make an eva boost for example auto miner cores basically resources and stuff that has to do with mining okay uh, if you have a, a, a big excess of ores um you could you know potentially sell some to him but the thing about that is he's not you know, he doesn't have huge quantities, but, you know, you could probably make some pretty decent money if you had a shitload of extra copper. I don't usually do that, though, because I usually, you know, use my use what I have. So that's the mining vendor. Um, over on this side is the uh, gardening vendor. And so you can buy, you know, sprouts from, from this vendor as well as grow plots. But th these are very heavy, so... Um, you know, if you want to come up here to buy grow plots, make sure you bring your ship as opposed to, you know, teleporting in person so that, uh, you know, you can, you can get as many as you need to, because you're only about probably only be able to carry one in your inventory otherwise. Okay. And then if we go up to the third level, um, there's free O2 up here. So, uh, always take advantage of that while you're in here. Um, we've got a couple of more very important vendors up here. Um, these guys are quest vendors but they also have uh, you know uh, some basic stuff including crew you can actually buy a crew if you want to um so these are basically nbcs that you can buy and set up in your ship or your base and have companions they don't do anything they just sit there but they're kind of cool um but the one we're after is this guy over here um not him he'll sell your optronic stuff these are like really high level things that you need for your more advanced um, CPU extenders and as you can see they're very very expensive so um, I would check other prices because there's other vendors that can sell some of this stuff too and compare with him sometimes he's more expensive sometimes he's not so it just really depends but this is the other what I consider main vendor up here it's the hardware vendor 
So the, from this guy, you can buy and sell a T2 multi-tools, uh, texture tools, color tools, that sort of thing, medium armor, and he's also got a variety of boosters that are important, and then some component types of items too, including the matrices. So for example, let's say we were looking for a couple of large optronic bridges uh, for a tier three extender. So he's selling them for 136,000 and change. What is this guy selling them for? He's selling them for 111. So he's actually got the better price than the other dude. Um, so yeah, just pay attention to that, especially on those really expensive items. Other than that, there is a, a repair uh, bay up here. You can also build these and put them in your base, but basically if you have, you know, armor or weapons and stuff that are damaged, you can put them in here and repair them. Now, it's it's free to repair, but be aware that you only have a limited number of times that you can repair an item in this game before it can no longer be repaired, which means you don't want to repair it until you really absolutely have to, okay? Um... And so, yeah, those are the main things really to know about the space station. On the middle level here is the teleporter. And so you can actually teleport down to the planet and back from here. So if I press F, um, fills L is our planet, and I can, tele um, I can teleport to the trading station. I don't want to teleport to the teleport station because that's actually a storyline item anyway. But if we want to teleport to the trading station... We can just go down there in person and um, and then, you know, come back up in person, too, because, of course, you know, we, we left our ship up here. But this can be really handy if you have a few things to sell, but you don't want to actually fly all the way up to, um, you know, the station in your ship. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a glitch. This tree is not supposed to be here. <laughs> um, yeah, that's been a problem with uh, since they came out with Alpha 12 and then released the game and they never fixed the vegetation growing through the POIs. So it's kind of a pain in the butt. But yeah, this is basically down on our planet now. Um, this is our base here and this is the, the trading station that we actually discovered in our hover vessel a long time ago. Um, so very cool that, we, that you can use those teleporters. Very useful. All right, let's go back up to uh, the orbital trading station. Remember what I said though, you have to at least enter orbit once before you before the orbital trading station will appear in this list. So you can't just teleport at the very early game and get up there uh, without first having flown up into space at least once. You don't have to visit the, the, the orbital station, you just have to fly into orbit, into the play field which, it's, uh, you know, which it exists in, and then it will appear for you. All right, cool. So let's see, let's head on down back here and uh, those are really the most important things that you should know about um, up here in the space station. You can buy food from them if you want to. Um, so yeah, let's buy a pizza. Because why not? We're hungry. Uh, you can access and use the armor lockers up here if you want to. So anything that's like a service item like, you know, O2, medical bay, armor locker, it's okay to use those. You just don't want to loot any of their actual containers. And there is a little sick bay over here. This guy will sell you uh, medical stuff, and you can also use their station uh, to heal yourself up if you need to do so. Okay? I very rarely buy medical gear in this game. I usually either loot it or make it. Um, oh, check out that ship out the window. That's really cool looking. He's just kind of flying around a big old freighter there. Uh, all right. So, guys, I think that is pretty much it for um, this episode and um, I mean there's more things we could cover uh, in space and that sort of thing but I think I've covered probably most of the the real basic stuff uh, that you'll need to know to get started in orbit just be really careful with that damn um, uh, capital vessel because he is mean and he'll come after you and you know space drones will spawn in and come after you so you just have to really be on your guard against that guy and and watch out for him and again i wouldn't recommend docking at the station if he's if he's really close by because i've never i've never tried that but um here let's do a squirt real quick before we actually leave the bay um <clears throat> i don't know if he'll still attack you 
while you're in the station or if the AI, you know, calls him off when you're when you're here. I'm not sure, but I've never tested that theory. But uh, you, he's the one you get to watch out for. And in your game, it might not be a, a Sunat class Corvette. It might be a destroyer. It might be some other type of ship. But what? Oh shit! Okay, yeah, we're taking fire. Um, so let's do a little bit of evasive maneuvering here and get out of his range. Yeah, that son of a bitch fired on us, man. Let's flip around here and drift away. Yep, he was camping us. He was just waiting for us, wasn't he? Very dangerous. So yeah, be careful of that guy. <laughs> uh, my recommendation to you is to do what I did. You know, if he's on your tail, draw him away, far enough away to where you have enough time to get back to the station, go inside, do your thing, and then get back out before he gets, he closes on you again. Um, you do need to stay within about, I don't know, two-ish kilometers of him for him to continue to pursue you, because if you get too far away from him, then he kind of loses interest. Um... So here's what I think we're going to do for the rest of this series. We are very close to, to the end. Um, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to... We, we, have, we have really one more major thing I want to do with you guys, and that is, you know, I want to go through a POI with you down on our planet. And I want to show you the workshop too, which shouldn't take too long, depending upon how detailed I get. Excuse me. And then what I might do at the very end for our very last episode is I might go ahead and spawn in a couple of things, uh, a couple of my, my builds and stuff like a capital vessel and, you know, show you how to warp and all that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, go to another star system uh, as our last thing. But, you know, there's just no way I'm going to be able to to build a capital vessel in this series. Capital vessels, guys, take such a long time to build uh, my, you know, my big capital vessel, the one that I built from scratch, took me months to build. And, you know, a couple of you in the comments have, have requested that I do a capital ship build. But what I'm going to do for you is I have uh, on my YouTube channel uh, videos of myself building this capital vessel. And what I'll do is I'll share the link with you. Uh, and then if you want to watch me build that, uh, you can. But there's just no way I <laughs> I can do that again uh, on this series. It would just take way too long. Um, so yeah, we'll probably, so, so here's what I have planned. Next episode, we'll, uh, we'll do the POI and we'll probably do that abandoned factory since I'm not really familiar with it. I, I am familiar with the reactor, but not the factory. I have done it before with on multiplayer, but only once. So I'm not super familiar with it. So we'll probably do that. Um, and then we'll, uh, spend the last episode uh, and I'll spawn in my capital vessel, and we'll we'll actually warp to another star system, and then that'll probably wrap up the series, okay? So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share out the video, and I will see you in the next episode. There's our base over there. We undershot it a little bit. Okay, see ya. Bye.